Hi everyone, my name is Samuel Mattioli and today we will explore how to create an AI agent using Langflow 1.1, OpenAI GPT-40 and AstraDB. This is a special case because in real world scenarios your agent will need often to retrieve information stored in databases with high volume, uh, such as invoices, banking statements, recommendations, product catalog and other data intensive applications. In the end we need our agent to connect to all of these uh, huge amounts of data. So to demonstrate this, we will build an airline AI agent. We will use Langflow to build the flow when the agent and to connect the agent to the model, to the LLM and to your data. On the data side, we will use two kinds of data. So we use JSON collection and also uh, structured data stored on AstraDB. So Astra is an OSQL and vector database solution capable of handling uh, high volumes of data with uh, very good performance. So it's very good for us to build our agent. In this video, we will see what AI agents are and how they work. We will create the database, create the data models and load data. After that, we will build the agent uh, and we will personalize the information for this, this agent. And in the end, we will see how the monitoring works on Langsmith. If you enjoyed the content, subscribe to the channel, leave a like and share your thoughts in the comment section. Let's dive in. So let's review a little bit what the agents are. So an agent is a piece of code that can uh, perform some actions and can reason about that and can uh, have some decision making. And we can uh, split that in two main parts. So we have the reasoning and the tools. The reasoning is, is the role that we will use the LLM. So when we have a test to, 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 to solve, the LLM will figure out how to solve that. And the LLM will use the tools to find uh, the solution for the, for the user input. So, and the tool can be anything. So consider tool as, uh, can be an API REST call. It can be a, a code that we need to run. It can be a query on an OSQL database. This is the case that we are exploring today when we have to feed the LLM with uh, uh, transactional data that we have from the customer. But you can also have like a RAG uh, knowledge base to, as a tool to the agent. So the agent can, can also uh, answer uh, questions about no, a knowledge base that only your company has. And even we can have an agent as a tool to another agent. In this way, we can create a multi-agent. But this is a subject to another video. So today it's important to understand that the agent will rely on the thought process uh, from the LLM and run tools to find the answer to questions. How does that work? So when the application receives uh, an user input, it will create a prompt with the question and with the tools to send to the, to the LLM. Then the LLM will do the reasoning process. So it will understand uh, how to solve the user's questions use, considering the tools that are available. Then it will ask the application to run uh, some specific tool and the, the parameters that, need, that should be used. And the, the role of the application then is to run that. And when the tool returns some result, and the application will uh, send the results to the LLM, which will reason again to understand if it has all the data that's needed to answer the user's uh, input. If uh, it needs to run another tool, that's okay. It will ask the application to run another tool with the, the parameters, and it will be uh, running in, in loop until the LLM realizes that it has the answer, or if it's not possible to have the final answer. Here it's important to understand that the LLM will not run any tool. So your application needs to run the tools with the correct parameters. And then this is the part where Langflow makes the, this process very easy because all the application logic and the integration with tools and coordination with the LLM is, is resolved by uh, Langflow. So we just have to use the right components and these components will handle all this orchestration for us. This is a very important part of the developing agents on Langflow. We will build an airline AI agent. So this agent will be built on Langflow and we will use OpenAI GPT 4.0 and 4.0 mini and on the reasoning part. So the, the LLM will decide which tool to use. And on the tool, we have two kinds of data. We will have the flight ticket. So with general information about uh, tickets. And we also have some invoices that are stored on tables. Uh, sometimes we will have a uh, lot of data to, to connect to your agent. So you may perform, you may need a very scalable and performant database, which is the role of Astra in this case. So we are not using RAG here, we are using transactional data. And this is, these are the tools that we will build to generate answers about flight tickets uh, and payments and information about that. Okay, so let's check it out how to build that. Okay, so to start, we will create the database on Astra and we will load some data. So let's start by, uh, I'm already logged on Astra. You can create your account uh, to, to run these tests or if you ha already have, you can just create a database and here we will define the name of the database. So I will create here. I can choose the provider 
um, Google, uh, uh, Amazon, or Azure, I will keep running on uh, AWS. And we can choose uh, the region. So uh, a lot of times you, you have to check your company, which is the best uh, cloud provider and region to run. Normally, it's the same that the, all of the applications are running. So I will create the database and let's wait for some, some minutes and this will be ready to, to use. So, okay, um, the database is created, took some two or three minutes. Let's create. So we will start creating a collection and loading some data. So we'll create the flight tickets. And in, as in this case, we don't want the create a RAG application. We will not uh, enable the vector in this case. So it will be a JSON uh, collection with very flexible data. Okay, let's create the collection. Great, our, our collection is ready. Now let's load some data. I, I have a file that will be available in the row graph. So these are the data that we will be loading. There are only five records. We will load them. Okay, so the data is loaded and then we can see that we have an ID, we have a departure and arrival, we have some time, a seat number. So we can ask this kind of information to the agent. Um, but we, we also want to create a table. So on Astra, we have the SQL console. We will create one table and load some data. The data model is, is available on the GitHub repo. So I will create the table. And after that, I will load some, some data. Again, the, the, this information is available on GitHub. So here I loaded some data. Let's take a look on, on the... Okay, so we have five uh, tickets and five invoices that our agent will use to answer questions. Great, now let's start creating our flow. So uh, I will be running Langflow locally here, but you can use the Stacks Langflow as well. I'm just running here so we can check the logs on Langsmith after. So we start by creating a flow. So on this new version of Langflow, we have a lot of uh, interesting uh, templates that you, you can use to understand how to create your flow. But uh, in this case, just to uh, understand all the concepts, let's cre cre uh, create a new uh, flow empty, a new empty flow. So. We will start that by renaming. Uh, so we will ask, define here airline agent. We can also define an API so we can create airline uh, agent in case we, we want to use this flow to connect to this flow using the API REST that's already provided. Uh, and we will use uh, a chat input where we will receive the answers from, from the from the customer. We will have an agent, uh, a component here called agent. This is a new component on Langflow, so it's very easy to concentrate all the logic into only one component, this agent. And uh, let's connect, so the chat input to the input. And we will also need an output. So let's connect the text here. Okay, uh, as we may want that our agent consider some uh, special data, we will also define a prompt to this agent. So let me get here the prompt. Okay, I will connect this as the instruction. So I will use this prompt to define uh, the prompt to the agent. We can also do that to, to explain to the, to the agent what is he doing and which information it should consider. So I will type some, some instructions here. So in this case, I created a simple prompt and I added a variable customer ID, which will be important for us to perform the queries on our database. So uh, this will create uh, on the prompt one variable and we will use a simple parse data to generate uh, an information. We will only hard code our customer ID here. So I will pick it here. So the customer ID, I will have this on this template. Okay. So with that, we have one customer ID that we'll, we will input into the prompt and the prompt will is connected to the agent. Now we need to start working with our tools. So before adding the tool to the to our flow, let's understand a little bit what we need to, to define when creating a tool. First thing is the name. So the name will be used to the agent, to the LLM specified to the agent with uh, tool should be executed. But the important part here uh, is the description. So uh, use your best prompt engineering techniques to, 
to describe in a way to the model uh, what, what's the idea and what's the purpose of this tool. So in this case, the first uh, tool that we create, we, ex we explain that this tool is important to find flight uh, basic information and the booking reference to, to identify a specific flight. So uh, try to work a little bit uh, in the description so the LLM can understand how to use the tool. And the same for the parameter. So in this case, we will have customer ID as a parameter to the model. And we are expecting a customer identify UID. We have the arrival and departure airport, but the important part here is this destination. And I'm explaining that I need the code. So when we have airports, we have the three letters, a code. I'm, I'm with this description, I'm, I'm uh, declaring to the model that I am expecting this type of parameters. And we may have some mandatory and optional uh, parameters. We can define that also in the tool, okay? Great, so let's create the tool. I have everything. Uh, right here, I'm just pasting right here. So find flights, the description. Uh, we will have the collection name, the collection that we created that is flight tickets. Um, here uh, we have the application token and the API endpoint. I will recreate that. Uh, you can have the token and the API endpoint on the Stacks uh, dashboard. So you can uh, be here. Let me just zoom a little bit. So the endpoint is here. I will copy it. And I will create a new variable on on, on NetFlow. So I will create Astro AI agent endpoint endpoint. Generic. I will paste it here. I will save, and then I can pick that. And the same for the token. Let's generate a token on Astra. We can be here. Generate token. This will generate a new token. Let's create a new variable. So Astra agent token, it's a credential, uh, save, and then I will use it here. So with that, we defined the collection. Now let's define the parameters. So we will have three parameters, the arrival airport, which I am saying that is the destination airport. Get some room here. Okay, let's add another parameter. So departure, airport, and let's add another one, which will be the customer ID. Note, please note that we are using an exclamation mark before to, to uh, tell the model that this is a required parameter. With that, we can connect the two to the agent. Okay, so let's recap what we have here. So we have an input, we have an uh, information, the customer ID that's coming from the sparse data, we generating a prompt. This prompt is being used uh, by the agent and we have a tool to get data from uh, the AstroDB collection. So with that, uh, let's test if it is it working. So I will ask what is the number on my flight to Seattle? So uh, checking the response here, uh, it's saying that it needed my customer ID and I just realized that I didn't add that, that information to my prompt. So let's adjust the prompt and run it again. Okay, nice. So what happened here? So I asked this, uh, what's my seat, what's the seat number on my flight to Seattle? And we can see that uh, it, use a defined flight tool with these parameters. So the arrival airport SIA, because I instructed the model to define the airport code and the customer ID that I defined it on the prompt. And then uh, the tool resolved, uh, returned all this information. And then uh, the model could figure out that it's the 3D. So 3D, and if we check on Nastra, let's take a look. Uh, Seattle is this flight, so 3D, correct. So this is uh, a, a way to use these JSON tools. When we, when you have uh, a JSON collection on Astra and you need to use this data on uh, together with uh, a, an agent, you can do it in this way. So now let's make something a little bit more complicated. So let's say that now we want uh, the invoice. So I want to know um, how did I pay for uh, uh, my flight tickets to, to Seattle? So this information is stored on the SQL table. So let's add another tool.
and in this case we will use the CQL. So Astra is based on Cassandra, so CQL uh, stands for Cassandra Query Language. Um, it, it's a different data model, but uh, we can use uh, here very very easily. So so let's create this this tool. So I will name that Get Invoice, and the tool descriptions is retrieve uh, information for a specific flight. The table is the table name, it's invoices. Uh, the token, I will reuse the same uh, agent uh, token. And API endpoint will be the agent endpoint. Uh, the table that we created on, on Cassandra has the customer key as the partition key, the flight ID and the invoice ID as cluster key. So in this case, we will use the customer ID and the flight ID to find the invoice. So I will use as partition keys, the customer ID. And as cluster and key, I will use the flight ID, ID of the flight. So uh, with that, we can connect the two. When we want to run this tool, it will need first to find the flight and using the flight, uh, the flight ID to run the second information. So when I ask it about uh, payment method, the question that I will submit in a second, uh, it will need to run the first uh, tool and after that run the second tool. So let's check it out. Okay, great. So uh, what happened here? Let's take a look. So uh, when I asked it, how did I pay for my flight to Seattle, the agent understood that it first need to find the flight. So it uses the same filters, arrival airport Seattle, the customer ID, and it received one flight. So here we have the ID of the flight, this information, and then it run the second, uh, to the second tool. So get invoice with the customer ID and the find flight that was retrieved from the first uh, tool. And then it found, found the answer and the installment plan and the payment method uh, that I was asking for. So my question was the credit card, the total amount and the installments that I used to, to pay. So if you want to run this flow with your application, you, you have the API ready to use, and you can do some tweaks. For example, you can use the parse data here to define your custom uh, customer ID. And when you send the request, you can send like this, so parse template, you can we can fill your, your customer ID, and then the applications will be, uh, the request will consider your uh, information. So just to understand online Smith, what happened. So let's take. So uh, the first question, what's, my, what's the seat number of my flight to Seattle? Uh, we can see on the chat, uh, OpenAI, that it submitted the find flights information along with the parameters. So arrival, uh, required uh, departure report, and customer ID. And this, this was the two that was called uh, by, the, by the LLM. So the application run, find flights here. So this was the input, and this is the output, just like we saw on Langflow Playground. And then uh, it find the answer here uh, in the last OpenAI uh, interaction. So this was the result of the tool. This is like the, the application returning to the LLM what was the result of the last uh, tool uh, execution. And then uh, the model figure out that it, it's able to uh, define uh, the answer. And here we can see the prompt that we submitted. So the prompt that we created is considered the system prompt. Okay, so this flow and now the files in, that you need to and instructions will be available on my GitHub uh, repo. Uh, feel free to, to check uh, this, this uh, flow and use and, and change it. It's a very, uh, it's a special case as I mentioned in the beginning because it makes us able to connect your customers to uh, real application data that started on a huge databases like Astra and Cassandra. So uh, if you like the, the video, uh, leave a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, share your ideas in the comment section, and ask for another kind of comments and we will try to, to build more content for you soon. Okay, so see ya, bye bye.